Hello, I'm Tom from Made by Loop, and in this After Effects video, I'm going to run through why you should use the relatively new Responsive Design Time functionality to retime compositions in After Effects. And I'll also briefly show how this can overlap with Adobe Premiere as well. Now, if you haven't heard of Responsive Design Time, it's basically a feature that was added in After Effects 2019 that gives you much more flexibility when retiming your compositions. And crucially, it allows you to preserve areas of your animations that you don't want to be affected by the retiming. That may not make much sense right now, but let's take a look at an example and how to set it all up, and hopefully things will become a lot more clear. As mentioned, responsive design time was added in After Effects CC 2019, so if you don't see it in the menu, make sure you upgrade to the latest version of After Effects. So let's get started. In this composition, I have a video here, and a simple lower thirds composition that animates a name and a job title on screen. In this case, it animates on the greatest detective of all time, and it stays on screen and animates off at the end. Now, it's a pretty common request to retime things in After Effects. And let's say in this example, our client is happy with the speed of the animation of the elements, but they wanted the lower thirds to only stay on screen for 10 seconds instead of 20. So our animation in and out has to stay at the same rate. That can't be sped up or slowed down, but the overall animation should only be on for 10 seconds. As with most things in After Effects, there are multiple ways of doing this. We could go into this composition and edit the animation keyframes to change the duration, or perhaps we could use the time remap functionality. And they're both fine approaches, but this is exactly where the responsive design time feature comes in handy. So to set it up and illustrate how it all works, I'll head into this lower thirds composition. And you can see here that we've got the keyframes controlling the animation at the start and at the end. And what we want to do is preserve this animation. When we come to retime things, we don't want to mess with the rate of this animation. We want to keep things as it is, otherwise it would animate on and off too quickly and just look like it's been sped up. So to set things up, we'll enable the responsive design time by choosing composition, responsive design time, create intro. And instantly you can see that what this has done is created these funky looking markers here at the beginning of our composition. What this does is it tells After Effects that whenever this composition is being retimed elsewhere, this section here should remain unchanged. Because we've got some animation at the end, we want to keep that the same, so we'll add an outro in the same way. We'll come up to Composition, Responsive Design Time, and Create Outro. There we are, we now have the markers at the end too, and you can adjust these to fit your animation perfectly by dragging the right hand marker down and moving it accordingly. So now we've protected our animation in these sections. If we head back into the main composition that we were working in, we can see how this has affected things. Now, there's no change just yet, but if I re-add our lower thirds composition, you'll see the difference. And you can see now that the markers that we added in the composition are now shown here. And this gives us a clear indication of, of where our animation is taking place. Now, because the responsive design time is enabled, the layer will behave slightly differently to normal. And what it will do is allow us to retime this whole layer just by dragging the end along the timeline. If I drag the layer down to 10 seconds, for example, we can see how this affects things. So what's happened here is that I've retimed this whole layer to 10 seconds, but the blue sections have remained the same. The animation in those blue sections won't be sped up. The retiming only affects this middle bit here which is fine because in this instance, we don't have any animation there that will be affected by the rate change. So if I quickly render things, we can see that our animation is happening at the same rate. That hasn't been changed. And the animation at the end is exactly right too. And it's not just making things quicker either. We could retime this to be 30 seconds, for example, and it works in exactly the same way. Our animation with the markers remains the same it's only what's in this middle section that's changed. In this example, we don't have any animation going on in this main section, but if we did, that would be sped up or slowed down. 
If there was a bit of animation in the centre that we wanted to preserve, then we could do that too. It's not just limited to intros and outros. The way that we would do that is to come back into this composition, set the work area to where we'd like it to preserve, and then choose the third option in the responsive design time menu. And there we go, we've got another section there that would be preserved whenever we retime things. So that's how the responsive design time works in After Effects. But where this becomes really powerful is when we start working with essential graphics and the motion graphics templates feature for Adobe Premiere. Using this same setup, what I'll do is export our lower thirds composition as a motion graphics template. Now, if you've never used motion graphics templates or essential graphics before and want to know how to use them, I'd be happy to do another tutorial. Just leave a comment below if you'd like to see that. But for now, I'll export the template and import it within Premiere. So jumping over to Premiere, I have the lower thirds motion graphics template imported here. And because it has the responsive design time feature set up, what this means is if I drag this into the timeline, I can then adjust how long the animation lasts just by dragging the end point to where we need it. And again, our animation stays exactly the same rate at the start and end. That's unchanged. It's just the sections in the middle that aren't protected that change. This is pretty powerful stuff. What it now means is that any video editor using Premiere can easily change the duration of your animations without affecting the key parts of the animation. They don't need to have any motion design skills, all they need to do is drag the end of the clip to where they need it in much the same way as they would do with any other clip. And the responsive design time feature just sorts it all out for them. So there we are, that's a brief introduction to the responsive design time feature and I'm really looking forward to using it in my client projects. I'm always needing to retime things and I'm constantly using the time remap function and creating a load of keyframes, but this will make things much easier, I think. As ever, do hit like and subscribe and check out madebyloop.co.uk for more motion design resources.